Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got another SolidWorks tutorial. This uh, tutorial was covering using a master model to control geometry across several parts. And uh, to do so, we're going to take advantage of the insert part command. So basically, master model technique of modeling is you have one model that has. Um, geometry that is shared across any other parts so in the case of this um, form I've created the shape is going to be split out across several parts and so the advantage of doing that through having one control one master model is that if uh, we change that geometry then you can go back into those other parts and update them and they will the uh, updated geometry will trickle down into the derived parts. Okay, so let's get, I'll show, show you what I've done here. This is a, I'm going to call it a speaker. It's basically, it's just a uh, sort of ambiguous form that I've created um, with a bit of curvature in the top here. Bit of a domed surface running around, bit of a planar surface, and then uh, coming down to a part line. So basically, I'm going to create three parts create the top case using this area like a control panel and then a lower case and to aid splitting the parts out I've created um, some split surfaces so one which is an extrude there to separate the lower and upper case and then this surface here to separate it out the control panel okay so I'm going to create three new parts so first one we'll do the lower case. So new part, you go insert part, and then you point to the master, there, speaker master, you can insert that. You have options to insert solid geometry, surfaces, axes, reference geometry, etc. Sketches. Um, for the purposes of this, we're just going to insert the surface bodies. Okay, so now we have the surfaces in there. So I'm going to hide one there because we don't need it. Okay, there's several ways to skin a cat. Um, I'm going to solidify this main form because it's a closed volume and then I'm going to insert cut with the surface here and then shell the part. You could also shell the part by offsetting these surfaces but um, we'll just do it one way. Uh, so go insert boss thicken and if you select a surface, and if that surface is closed, you can you have the option to create a solid from an enclosed volume. So we'll go yes. We don't want to merge it into any other solids. Okay. So now I've got one so solid body, and now I'm going to insert, cut the surface, or select the surface. The arrow points to the direction of the area that's going to be removed. We go okay, and hide that surface. Now we can go insert features shell. I'm going to pick this face to delete and we'll just go one millimeter. Okay, there's our shell. We can change that. Maybe it's too thin. Two millimeters. And rebuild. Let's change the color of this. Okay, and save. Lowercase. Now I'm going to do the same thing. New part. Insert part. Speaker master. Again, surface bodies. Okay. And again, I'm going to go insert boss thicken. Select our main form. Create solid from enclosed volume. Go OK. Now I'm going to create the upper case. So I'm going to insert cut the surface. This time we're going to flip the cut direction. Hide that, and then we're going to cut the section out before we shell it. So again, another cut the surface. It's pointing inwards, we want to remove the inner section. And hide that. And then insert feature shell. Out to two millimeters. Oops. Oh gosh. Okay. 
SolidWorks has this funny bug sometimes. You might have to pre-select the face. Insert feature. Shell. Face, two millimeters. Minimum radius, okay. So, if it's less than the minimum radius, go C for curvature. Well, that's the shortcut of mine anyway. Otherwise you go view, display, curvature. Okay, and as you can see here, it says our radius of curvature is two. All right. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move back over to our speaker master. I'm gonna double click this. And I'm gonna make that three. I've got this as a variable fillet on the top in case I don't want to change anything. Okay, and we'll rebuild that. Now I'm gonna swap back over to my new part, which I haven't saved. Oh look at that, it's updated already. We go curvature. Now it says radius of curvature three. Okay, so if I press pre-select that face, insert features, shell, two millimeters. Okay, I'm gonna save this part. Save as uppercase. All right, now I'm gonna create the last part, which is this panel in the middle. New part, insert, part, speaker master, surface bodies, go okay. Insert, click in, create solid. Now I'm gonna insert, cut, solid surface. Actually, I'll show you one thing. If you wanna create a gap between the part, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can offset the surface, whatever gap you want, uh, or you can move faces afterwards. But I, I think I'll just go, um, I'll make it coincident and then I'll add a, a move face afterwards. So you go insert, cut the surface. So we want to flip that because we want to remove the outside. And then insert, surface cut. We want to remove the bottom part. Okay, and I'm going to insert features, shell, two millimeters. Okay, and save that. That's the panel. Right, so now I've got the three parts. Now I can create an assembly. And we can insert lowercase. And uh, it's floating. You can. Um, Origin to origin, mate it. Just change the background to white. Insert component, existing part, uppercase. Origin to assembly origin. And then last part, insert component, panel. That's floating, but just unfloat that, or float it I mean, and then origin to origin. Okay, now you can see we've got our three parts. I'm going to just pop back over to the panel here. Okay, so I've got three parts, they're all derived from the speaker master. They have no dependencies on this assembly. Uh, the parts are only dependent on the master. So say if you went into one of these and look at your um, list external references, speaker master. Okay. So I'll just show you what you can do with this. So say I wanted to tweak this radius, which is uh, crosses two parts. Instead of having to build these parts individually and change the radius twice, I can just go back into the master. Um, it's a variable fillet, so say we wanted five on the front. Rebuild that in here. Now if I go back over to our assembly, it's rebuilt. Okay, it's not the most prettiest uh, rebuild, but anyway, it just proves the point. 
I've got a curvature. Curvature, that's five, and it's three around the back. So that's updated. Um, if I wanted to have a look at some of these other. Say you wanted to change the overall thickness to 13. Okay, so that's rebuilt. Now if I change back to my assembly, okay, those parts have rebuilt. So you can see the um, how useful using a master part is because you only need to make your updates in one place, which reduces risks of creating these parts twice with same geometry. Uh, seems crazy, really. There's no point. So you just do this once. Again, this, this technique, it's really useful for things that are shared across um, multiple parts. So these surfaces, boundaries, um, split lines, everything shared across multiple parts. Say you wanted to add a, a button in here or something. So we go to the top plane, sketch. I can um, just roughly create a button, create a circle, 15. Okay, and then I'll insert surface extrude. That protrudes out the top of that surface. Okay, or if I save that speaker master, just to show that I don't need to um, go through the assembly, I can just go to the uppercase. Okay, that surface is updated because it's in our options here. Insert part, we're copying surfaces. Okay, then I can go insert cut with surface. Okay, it's going to cut the inside out, yep. Okay, so now I need to create a button part, so we'll go new, insert part, click the speaker master, go open, and surface bodies, okay. Right, insert boss base, thicken, we'll just thicken the volume, and then insert cut the surface. Cut the surface. Okay. Hide the surfaces. This is all um, just indicative. I mean, obviously, a button like this, there'd be a whole lot of mechanical engineering stuff going on on the inside. This is just to show how you can get all the surfaces to uh, update and work together. Now I'm just going to insert a um, face move on the outside flip direction to add up if I grow that here we go to add a clearance between the two and okay save that as button Button two. Okay. Go into the assembly. Now I can insert component button two. Okay, it just goes into its default uh, origin to origin. If you want, you can float uh, origin to origin. Okay. So you might be saying, okay, well, why can't you just create that by the button by itself um, and not have the dependency on the master part? Well, because creating that surface on the top there, that means you'd be creating the geometry twice, um, which would be a nightmare. So you create it once and then derive parts from it. And flexibility-wise, now I can go back over into the master. I didn't mention this as I should have, but I'm going to move this. OK, 
Okay. So we've moved our button. We'll save that and swap over to the assembly. The button's moved. Okay, so I think that's a good sort of basic explanation of um, the advantages of using a master model and using an insert part uh, to, to uh, push that geometry out to other parts without necessarily having to go through an assembly. There are other ways to do this where you uh, copy um, geometry from part to part within an assembly but then you create a dependency on that assembly which can come back to bite you. Um, I don't really recommend doing it that way uh, in SOLIDWORKS because the tools aren't really robust enough um, to keep track of things. Anyway, AJ Design Studio, Andrew Jackson. Hope this was useful. Thank you.